I, I was thinking of Easter eggs. Much like Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, El Camino, a Breaking Bad story, is filled with references and Easter eggs and symbolism and all kinds of callbacks. Some of them you may have noticed and others may have later occurred to you during an epiphany that you had while reading Whitman on the John. Luckily, we're going to break down all of the hidden details here on Screen Crush. The film begins with Jesse looking at a mountain in the distance. This book ends a shot near the end of the movie when Walt looks out on a similar mountain. But there's a key difference. When Walt looks at the mountain, he says, You're really lucky, you know that? You didn't have to wait your whole life to do something special. Because he's dying of cancer and moving toward the end of his life. To him, these mountains represent a barrier, an ending. But to Jesse, they represent the frontier and new possibilities. His conversation with Mike reflects this when they're talking about what they're going to do next. Where'd you go? Alaska. It's the last frontier. If the setting looks familiar, it's because it's where Walt killed Mike back in season five and also where Mike dumped all of his incriminating evidence. This conversation takes place during episode six of season five, just after they offer to sell their shares to Declan. From the way they reference Walt, You know he's not gonna be happy. I'm going to guess that this is before they ask him to sell his share of the methylamine. The two are wearing the same outfits and they're talking about what they're gonna do with their big scores. In the conversation, Jesse says, Put things right which Mike says that he can never do. Mike has some history with trying to right wrongs when he killed the two crooked cops who murdered his son. But Jesse might have ignored this advice. In the last scene, he's written a letter to Brock, son of his ex-girlfriend who was killed because of Jesse. And though we don't see the letter, a lot of fans have theorized that this is an apology to Brock and it explains why his mother was killed. So on Jesse's part, it's a small effort to set things right. And there's other implications of this scene that fit in with the theme of the movie that we're gonna talk about later on. So as he's running away from the meth compound, he's holding a gun waiting for the cops, which is similar to the first scene of the series when Walter White did the same thing. He drives over a mailbox number 212, a possible reference to the 12th episode Episode of season two, Phoenix, where Jane dies. This is a major turning point for Jesse. It's the episode where Walt really started to manipulate him and control his life. Nice job wearing the pants. The two streets that intersect here are Arroz and Holly. Arroz means rice in Spanish. This is a reference to Vince Gilligan's longtime girlfriend, Holly Rice, who also inspired the name of Walton Schuyler's daughter, Holly. Notice Skinny Pete's house is decorated with Star Trek memorabilia. In a previous episode, we learned that he and Badger are huge fans of TOS. You're telling me every time Kirk went into the transport, he was killing himself? Hmm? So over the whole series, there's like 147 Kirks, at least. There's a signature Breaking Bad time lapse where we see that Saul's strip mall offices are now a sports bar and Pollo's Hermanos is now a restaurant called Twisters. This is a tribute to the actual restaurant in Albuquerque where they filmed interior and exterior shots of Gus Frank's chicken joint. Los Pollo's Hermanos, taste the family. When Jesse wakes up, he has a brief hallucination that he's still living in a cage. This is reflected by the striped pillows and sheets in the room, which are hanging in the window like bars. In the shower scene, we see scars on his back like he's been whipped. This leans heavily into the metaphor that Jesse's story reflects that of Jesus. Now, The Take did a great video on this that talks about the many parallels, including the pair's love of woodworking. So you should find that video and watch it. It's really good. Old Joe, of course, appeared in multiple Breaking Bad episodes and even destroyed the classic RV. He detects a low jack in the El Camino. This is a tracer to find stolen cars and it's how Hank ended up encountering Tuco in the episode Grilled from season two. Speaking of Hank, in the trailer for El Camino, there are photos of he and Steve Gomez hanging up on the wall in the DEA. In that scene, Skinny Pete refuses to give up Jesse. No way, I'm helping you people put Jesse Pinkman back inside a cage. And in the movie, we see him covering for his friend. Dude, you're my hero and he and Badger even give Jesse the money that Walt paid them to shine laser pointers at Gretchen and Elliot. So now let's talk about Todd's apartment, which is filled with Easter eggs. There's these grenade salt and pepper shakers, which both hint at Todd's violent personality and also his dual nature. He's a sociopath, but also an all shucks boy next door. Just so you know, this isn't personal. And then there's the tarantula, first featured in season five's Dead Freight. In that episode, Todd proved his loyalty to the gang by shooting a boy named Drew, who stumbled across their methylamine heist. The boy had a tarantula, and apparently Todd kept it as a souvenir. It's pretty sick. But also notice that Todd was apparently into arts and crafts. He made little figurines for the tarantula's terrarium, shrieking in horror like they're in a classic monster movie with a giant spider. There's even a model of a cherub on a dirt bike, perhaps inspired by his murder of Drew. Speaking of snow globes, there's this one of him and Lydia being showered with rose petals. Remember, he was romantically obsessed with Lydia. I just think we work together. 
Good. He took over her regular meetings with Walt when she would always drink tea with Stevia, which is why she's sitting on a teacup pedestal while creepy, doll-eyed Todd looks up in awe. Now, speaking of Lydia, we do hear news reports that she's in a hospital in Houston and she's one of Walter White's victims. The unnamed woman who is hospitalized in critical condition is not expected to survive. But my favorite snow globe is the most subtle. It's this husky, which the filmmakers intended to represent Jesse. There are dog metaphors all throughout Breaking Bad, like the stray that crossed the road after Walt left his family in Ozymandias. But usually it's Jesse who's associated with dogs. He refers to his murder of Gail Bedecker as killing a problem dog. He's often forced to ride in the passenger seat of cars, like a dog. And the season five episode where he turns on Walt is called Rabid Dog, implying that he's unleashed and crazy. El Camino doubles down on the dog symbolism. Todd grooms Jesse like a dog and even says, I'm gonna do a better job of keeping you clean from now on. In exchange for his good behavior, he offers Jesse treats like a dog. On the way home, I was gonna get us some pizza. And most obviously, Jesse is kept in a cage and on a leash. Even in this overhead shot of him looking for Todd's money, it looks like he's trapped in a cage and trying to find a way out. By the end, he's like this portrait in Skinny Pete's house, a free wolf howling on top of a mountain, very much like the one he was staring at in the first shot. Also, did you notice this uniform in Todd's bedroom? This is from Vominos Pest Control, his former employer. Vominos is the crooked exterminator company that Walt, Jesse, and Mike use as a money laundering front in season five. In the flashback, Jesse helps Todd clear away a cleaning woman who he strangled, which is exactly how Todd died in the finale and how Walt committed his first murder. Todd smokes Morley cigarettes. Now, this is actually a fictional cigarette brand first used in the movie Psycho, but it's better known as the cigarette of choice of the cigarette smoking man on The X-Files, the TV show where Vince Gilligan got his start. He cast Brian Cranston on Breaking Bad because he was impressed with his performance in the episode Drive. You think I'm just some ignorant pud knocker, don't you? But I get it, man. I see what this is. Hiding spots for money are also a recurring motif in Breaking Bad. I like how Jesse checks under the sink because that's where he hit his meth back in season two. Jesse first sees his parents on TV through a window and later he sees them for the last time through a window. That's a neat visual parallel. He tells them, well, You did your best. And whatever happened with me, it's on me. Jesse accepting blame for his own actions is a big step forward for the character. If you remember, he used to always blame others for his misfortune, especially Mr. White. Ever since I met you, everything I have ever cared about is gone. Walt manipulated him into killing Gail, one of the few murders he actually commits on the show. I mean, compared to Walt, Jesse's hands stay pretty clean. That's because, fundamentally, he's a gentle person. In the opening of the episode Peekaboo, he plays with a cockroach before setting it free. He repeats this action in El Camino before facing down the gang of welders. What do you say? You're 22 against my 45. Now in this scene, Jesse isn't seeking out violence, but he's ready for it. He says, Like the Wild West. Vince Gilligan has said for years that he sees Breaking Bad as a modern Western. So ending this story with a classic Western quick draw is a perfect capper for the whole series. Now if the stripper's bodyguard Clarence looked familiar, maybe you remember him from his brief appearance in season one of Better Call Saul. How about you? You want one? <laughs> Jesse destroys the welder shop. Yes, science! And notice how Jesse incorporates the lessons that his mentors have taught him. Mike taught him to be patient. I don't care for unpredictable, so we wait. And how to sneak into places, while Walt showed him that you can use science to become a super criminal. Then we get the flashback with the return of Heisenberg. This takes place directly after the episode four days out, when they were stranded in the RV in the desert. Take some stuff off of the RV and build it into something completely different. You know, like a, like a doom buggy. In this first shot, Jesse is talking to Jane in the hotel room. And notice that after almost dying in the desert, he has the thermostat set to 59. At the Al Cafe, which is a real restaurant in Albuquerque, he utters the films only. Yeah. Then he sits down for breakfast with Mr. White, probably the last scene these two characters will ever share together. Jesse mentions electrolytes. Maybe those electrolytes you were talking about, you are showing him, you know. Yeah. Probably because in the previous day, Walt said this to him. Your body is running dangerously low on electrolytes. Then he can't remember the name of the element. It's got bromine. Bromelain. 
which is actually the chemical symbol that makes up the BR in Breaking Bad's title sequence. The two have a conversation that's very revealing of their characters. Walt asks Jesse what he wants to do with his life, and Jesse says, Sports medicine? Because Jesse isn't interested in being the hero or the center of attention. He'd rather literally be on the sidelines taking care of people. Whereas Walt, who wants power and control, tries to force him into, Or your business business and marketing. And this is basically the character's relationship distilled into one scene. Walt wants Jesse to share his ambition. A cook all of your own. Why not? You deserve it. But doesn't see him for who he really is. Squander that potential, your potential, to do what, Jesse? I don't know. I'll figure it out. He doesn't even realize that Jesse graduated high school. What do I need a GED for? I got my diploma. You were standing right on stage when they handed it to me. I know, I just... In the final scene, Jesse has followed Mike's advice and gone to Alaska. It's the last frontier. But the key part of their conversation is when Mike says, Only you can decide what's best for you, Jesse. Not him, not me. This is important because, for all of Breaking Bad, Jesse is manipulated and controlled by others. Never once believing in yourself? I don't know. First by Walter, then Gus, and finally by Uncle Jack and his evil Nazi friends. In Jesse's final Breaking Bad scene, he rejects Walt's manipulation and tells him to kill himself. I want this. Then do it yourself. So his arc in El Camino is learning how to become his own man and make his own decisions. This is even reflected in the title of the movie. El Camino is a reference to Todd's car, but also in Spanish, El Camino means the road or the way. Jesse is trying to find his own way, and this is the subject of the flashback with Jane. Jesse tells her that he likes her philosophy of going where the universe takes you, but she rejects this, saying, I've gone where the universe takes me my whole life. It's better to make those decisions for yourself. Jesse's journey to finding his own way is even foreshadowed in his final shot of Breaking Bad. All through the series, Jesse is shown riding passive in the passenger seat. But when the show ends, Jesse's behind the wheel, making his own future. So let's talk about Jesse's wardrobe in the final scene. Clothing colors are very important in the show. Yellow often means danger, while blue symbolizes the money made from blue meth. Hence why Lydia is always wearing blue. It's kind of a, I don't know exactly what you call it, it's kind of a... Cornflower. Walt begins the show wearing beige and pastels, and later in the series wears the exact same outfit, just a much darker shade. In the flashback, Jesse is wearing a white shirt beneath his black jacket, hinting at his inner goodness underneath his criminal actions. In El Camino's last scene, he's wearing a white woolen sweater, similar to the sweater that Walt wore in the pilot. This symbolizes that Jesse is living a normal life, like Walt once did, but also that he's come out of this whole ordeal clean and pure. Because inside, he's always been a good, gentle person. Just like Breaking Bad revealed the evil that had been inside Walt all along, the show revealed Jesse's inner goodness. But what do you think? Is El Camino a good ending to Breaking Bad? Let me know in the comments below. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.